Hi folks, in this video we're going to have a look at Snell's Law, how we can verify Snell's Law experimentally and determine the refractive index. So let's start off by thinking, what is Snell's Law? So this law states that for light travelling from one medium to another, the ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence is, to the sine of the angle of refraction is equal to a constant and that this constant is known as the refractive index. So the way we would write that is the sine of our angle of incidence divided by the sine of the angle of refraction. So that's our ratio. That is equal to a constant, which is known as the refractive index. And that is given the symbol n. So to verify this relationship, we're going to need to collect some data. And that will be a range of angles of incidence and the corresponding angles of refraction. In order to do that, we need a ray box. We need a block made from glass or perspex. This block in particular is perspex. And we need a protractor to measure those angles. So the first thing we're going to do is take the block, put it in the centre of the page and trace around it with a pencil. This is important because throughout this experiment we are going to need to remove this block so that we can draw on the path of any of the light rays. Now we're going to remove the block and we're going to add in the normal. So first we choose a point along the long edge of the block and then to that point we will draw the normal which is 90 degrees to the boundary. This normal is important because this is what we use to measure all our angles from. Every angle is measured between the ray of light and the normal. So for the angle of incidence, it's between the incident ray and the normal. For the angle of refraction, it's between the refracted ray and the normal. So although that line isn't actually there, there's no ray of light at that point, it is important for us to take our measurements. The first angle of incidence that we're going to use here is 20 degrees. So using the protractor, we mark out where that um, ray of light is going to go. And I'll use the ruler just to map that out as well. Next, we replace the block and then we take our uh, ray box, turn it on and line up that incident ray of light with the incident ray that we've drawn on our diagram. It is important that you turn off the lights to make the ray of light more visible. So we can see the incident ray of light where it hits the block. We're interested in the refracted ray, which is inside the block. So in order to figure out where that is, because we can't draw on the block, we mark out where the, the emergent ray is. Once we've worked out where the emergent ray is, we can remove the block, use the ruler then to join up those points, and that will show us where the light emerged from the block. And by joining the two rays that we have in the middle, that will tell us where the ray of light went while it was inside the block. So we need to measure the angles of incidence and the angle of refraction. We already measured the angle of incidence because we set it at 20 degrees. So now we need to measure the angle of refraction, which remember is between the normal and the refracted ray. In this case, the angle of refraction works out to be 13.5 degrees. So next, we continue this for various rays of angles of incidence. We've already done 20, so now we're going to do 30, 40, 50 and 60. And we repeat this process marking out where the emergent ray is and then joining the line in between to show where the path went inside the block and then that allows us to measure the angle of refraction that we need. So now we can have a look at how we can process these results and use them to verify Snell's law. So the aim of this experiment is to verify Snell's law. 
So that means we need to show that sine i over sine r is equal to a constant. At the moment, we have i and we have r, so therefore we will need to calculate the sine of each of these. So in the table that we have here, that, that's going to go into the next two columns, where we will have sine of the angle of incidence in degrees, and then we will have the sine of the angle of refraction in degrees as well. When you calculate these values, make sure that you do those to three significant figures. So you can pause the video now to give yourself an opportunity to work those out. Once we have those calculated, there are two ways of proving that the, the ratio is equal to a constant. The first thing we could do is do it by calculation. So in our final um, column in the table, we could just do sine i divided by sine r, and those values should all be pretty similar. Um, if they are, that would prove then that it is a constant. And to get the actual value for refractive index, we would add them all up together, add all the values of n that we calculate for each set of values, add them together, and then take an average. Another way that we could do it would be to use a graphical method. So how we would do that then is we would plot a graph of sine i on the y-axis and sine r on the x-axis. So I'm just going to show you why those are the axes that we use. Looking at our equation here on the right of the screen, sine i over sine r is equal to this constant n. First, I'm going to rearrange the equation. I'm going to bring this sine r over to the other side. So what we have is sine i is equal to n times sine r. Now, if we compare this with the standard equation for a straight line, that is y is equal to mx plus c. There is no plus c in this case. So if we were to plot uh, sine i on the y-axis and we were to plot sine r on the x-axis, then if we calculate the gradient of the graph, that would give us the refractive index. So again, you can pause the video here while you plot that graph. So your graph should look something similar to this and the next step now would be to draw a line of best fit through those points. The fact that the graph of sine i against sine r gives a straight line, this verifies Snell's law. It verifies that sine i over sine r is in fact a constant. Looking at our equation, we can see that if we were determ to determine the gradient of this graph, that would tell us what the refractive index is. So to do that, we need to draw on a large triangle and work out the gradient from that. Remember that whenever you're drawing the triangle, you're choosing two points on your line of best fit. They don't have to be actual data points that you've collected, especially if those data points do not land exactly on your line of best fit. So any two points along the line, not necessarily data points. So the refractive index of this material should work out to be around 1.5. To summarize this experiment, there are four key areas that we need to look at. First of all, we have the diagram. Remember that in the exam, you need to clearly draw your diagram and label any pieces of apparatus and any key measurements that you need to take. So in this case, we have the ray box and um, we have a ray of light going towards our glass or perspex block. And you'll notice that I've also labelled on there the normal, the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. Make sure those angles are labelled between the ray and the normal. There are two key measurements that we take in this experiment, the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. Both of those require a protractor. To obtain those measurements, what we do is we draw around the glass block and we mark on the incident and emergent rays. We then remove that block and join those two rays together. Then construct the normals and measure the angle of incidence and the corresponding angle of refraction. And we repeat that for a range of different angles of incidence. Then we calculate the sine of the angle of incidence and the sine of the angle of refraction. If we plot sine i on the y-axis and sine r on the x-axis, then we would expect to get a straight line through the origin in order to verify Snell's law. Alternatively, we could also calculate sine i over sine r for all pairs and then 
that ratio should be a constant again to verify Snell's law. I recommend that you pause the video here and make a copy of this page into your notes. And that's it. I hope you find that useful.